Welcome to Soul Adventure TV, where we explore what may very well be an unprecedented opportunity in humanity's spiritual and physical evolution, and the choices standing before each and every individual to walk on this grand adventure or not. Do we really know who and what we are and what we can choose to be? I'm your host and fellow soul adventurer, Steve Crow. Today we have with us Will Berlinghoff, the interpreter or channel for a remarkable energy calling itself Cosmic Awareness. Not an entity or being as we might traditionally understand it, instead Cosmic Awareness describes itself as an elevated 12th dimensional force of consciousness and oneness. Will was in the midst of a 20 year career as a tarot card reader when one day he suddenly felt himself slipping into a different intuitive level and was able to access a flood of information about his clients, eventually leading to his work as a conscious channel for the cosmic awareness energy that we will be talking with today during this program. Will holds a BA degree in psychology and has, has combined his extensive experience in traditional addiction and group counseling therapies with his psychic abilities to develop his own unique psycho-spiritual approach. He's just returned to Canada from Denmark, Australia, where two weeks ago he married his soulmate, Callista Summerfield. Very soon now he will be returning to Western Australia permanently to begin his life with his new bride. So at this very happy time, it's with great pleasure that I welcome to Soul Adventure TV our guest, Will Berlinghoff. Hello, Steve, and how are you today? Well, I'm great. Thank you so much for uh, agreeing to be on the program. We've been really looking forward to speaking with you. My pleasure, indeed. I've been looking forward to this opportunity to speak to you and to channel for those who may be watching or listening, I gather, to this uh, interview. Yeah, watching it and listening, actually. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you went from a tarot card reader and counselor to the channel for cosmic awareness. Now that, that sounds like a big jump to make. It must have been quite the experience when, uh, when cosmic awareness first made itself known to you. Well, I have to give you some background. I've actually been a member of Cosmic Awareness Communications, the organization that hosts the channeling of cosmic awareness, since 1978. So, of course, I'm approaching, well, 14 years, uh, 34 years now. And so I've been a longtime member. The tarot readings that I did were never of a psychic variety. I was always channeling. I knew this as I developed my skill set. And so when it was finally the time for cosmic awareness to come through, it actually wasn't as big a leap. What I finally had to do was let go of my preconceptions of what it would be like to be the channeler. And when it happened, it was like a moment where I wasn't thinking, this is what I must be. This is how I must do it. And I just let information come through. I was asked by Avaton, the former editor of CAC, to give a forecast for 2005, uh, the newsletter, CAC newsletter. And he meant for me to do it as a tarot reader. And I thought, no, I'm just going to let the information flow through me, whatever I get. And that was when I was a little surprised that Cosmic Awareness finally came through because I had tried before with conceptions of what it had to look like. Take those conceptions away and suddenly awareness was channeling through me. And then I went on a pretty sharp learning curve of how to channel in my way and not in the way that was done by the former channeler interpreter Paul Shockley. And that was when I developed my own unique style I'm much more flexible in how I do it. I can do channeling anywhere for a group or a single person, live or over the phone or whatever is needed. So those are the gifts that I am now bringing to the table. So that's my story. That's quite interesting. You know, I, I read in some of the uh, Cosmic Awareness material that you have posted online that it, it, that it, it, it apparently said, and, and I have to take a break here i'm not being disrespectful when i say it am i <laughs> no actually that's the very term that is correct and we have such a predispensation to say he because of our religious training that most people call cosmic where awareness he but it would better describe a collective consciousness oh good okay so uh, I was reading that the Cosmic Awareness said that uh, actually uh, anyone could learn how to channel its energies 
but it didn't really explain like how that might happen or what special training might be required. What, what do you, what's your input on that? Well, first of all, I would say have dozens of lifetimes where you have been involved as a spiritual seeker and then come into this lifetime and dedicate your life to uh, reaching a level of spiritual awareness. And if you can make that happen real easy, then yeah, you can channel cosmic awareness. Well, it's interesting that you uh, brought that up because the question I was going to ask you next, and I am going to ask you next, is uh, have you explored any of your own past lives to see what lifetimes and experiences might have prepared you for this role? Absolutely, and I have seen the lifetimes where I have been involved with groups or on my own as a spiritual seeker, and as a druid, I've had several lifetimes as druid, uh, even a lifetime as Merlin, but when I say Merlin, what was given to me in one of my investigations was Merlin was actually a title. It wasn't actually the name of only one chief arc druid. And therefore, it was a rank versus the name. And I saw in a past life regression that I was doing that I was one of the Merlins. And then I got that information. It was five years later that I finally read in a book that that's exactly what it was. Merlin was the designation of rank, not a, a, a name. And therefore, I remembered that life. I've remembered lives in the Essene order around uh, the entity we now call Jesus the Christed one or Jesus Christ. I remember times when I was in the Cathar region of uh, France and many other lifetimes that have popped into my mind or I've done regression work, which is the type of therapy work I do, where I retrieved or retrieved, in this case, my own personal past lives. Sometimes they spontaneously come to me and I, I'm remembering, especially if I'm meeting a person and I can remember the kind of history we've had together. So that's how it works for me. So yeah, I've had a chance to definitely uh, explore my own lifetimes. Well, I'm sure it's been a fascinating journey over many, uh, perhaps thousands of years <laughs> uh, that prepared well, you. Hundreds of thousands when you start going into other solar systems and dimensions and everything. Oh, indeed, yeah, indeed. Well, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to bring in cosmic awareness now, and then we'll come back and we'll talk. We'll talk to you to you later, and sure. get, get some uh, closing remarks. So I'm going to give you a chance to um, to get into the correct space, and then we'll be right back with cosmic awareness. Okay, and I'll talk to you on the other side. At this time, that that which is the consciousness that is known as cosmic awareness and the living force of awareness is available for the purpose of doing this interview at this time. This awareness welcomes Steve Crow and all those who may be seeing and hearing this interview at this time. Please proceed. Well, thank you for joining us, uh, Cosmic Awareness. Um, I would like to, if you could start off by giving us your snapshot view of where humanity stands in its physical and, and spiritual evolution at this particular point in time. That this awareness sees that humanity is at the very brink of a precipice, a huge gap to the other side, and a point where humanity has come to that marks the ending of what once was and the beginning of what will follow. The problem, of course, is that humanity stands at the edge of the precipice and many do not know what to do next, how to proceed. That there are many who are blind followers of social convention, never questioning the leadership, the authority figures of their lives and have come to the edge and are just simply going to go straight over the edge because they are led to this 
downfall. There are many who may be standing at the edge and due to fear will not know how to take the quantum leap of faith that is now asked of them. And still in fear, they may too go into the abyss, not knowing how to cross. But there are also many who have come to the edge and understand that a leap of faith is required and that a bridge will be provided or they will be shown how to fly so that they can cross the gap, the, so that they can cross the abyss that lies in front of them and then arrive on the other side. That these ones are those who have developed their spiritual awareness and understanding to such a point where when it is time to take the leap of faith, they are able to do so. That humanity on the whole is at a point where many are still asleep. This is why they do not know how to proceed for enlightenment and awareness and ascension do require an awakening from the mm, stupor and from the dream state many are in that is defined as third dimensionality. It is for this reason that many will require a physical upheaval in their lives in order for them to spiritually cross and find themselves as spiritual beings. That this awareness would say at this time, 25% of humanity has reached a level of spiritual awareness that will allow them to cross the gap. 75% will not cross the gap in a spiritual way, but through perhaps the death experience will transform back into spirituality. Of this 75%, it is seen that approximately 25% of that, which is the remainder of humanity, refuse to go and will go into that which this awareness calls planet B, a planet where those who wish to live in dark concepts and beliefs may continue their existence. That this is the answer from this awareness at this time. Well, thank you. Um... I'd like to turn now to the topics of opportunity and choice. And in and, and thinking of ascension, you know, some very exciting opportunities and experiences await those who would choose to experience them. But first, individuals must seek to raise their personal vibrational level. Why is that rise necessary? And how can it be best achieved at the individual and global level? The rise is necessary because the purpose of physicality at this time is so that the soul can send an aspect of itself outwards into a separated reality from itself which exists in fifth dimension and beyond so that it can have learning experiences that when that which is the aspect of the soul desiring these learning experiences enters a physical body that it goes through the veil of forgetfulness so that it can be completely absorbed into the task at hand, having a physical experience without the distraction of knowing its spiritual source so that it can grow towards a remembrance of its spiritual being and in that growth learn the lessons necessary and required by both an individual on his or her personal journey or humanity as a group soul that also needs to reach that spiritual awareness of what it is as the individual moves towards awareness of what he or she truly is this being a spiritual soul aspect having a physical experience, not a physical being wondering if it has a soul. Does this answer your question? Oh, indeed. In fact, I have to say I'm, I'm kind of shocked. It's almost like you're looking over my shoulder, looking at my interview questions in advance because you're coming directly to my next point. Um, 
Before asking you about humanity's divine nature, I'd like to first focus on what you, exactly what you brought up, our physical aspects, how our physical bodies came to be, in other words, our, our vessels for spirit. What is it, if anything, about humanity's current understanding of our physical beginnings, our evolutionary history, that we have not yet understood? That which has not yet been understood were the last comments of this awareness in the preceding question, that all beings, all human beings, each individual is actually a spiritual being having a physical experience. This means that the spiritual being can create the reality that they live in, that what occurs as part of the experience and the experiment of dualistic reality, third dimensional material reality, is that the soul chooses to immerse itself completely in the physical so that it can have the unique experiences of separation from the divine soul and have the physical type experiences without an awareness of its spiritual nature. The task, of course, is to grow into spiritual awareness of one's true being. And as one moves into such a state, the illusion or maya of physicality starts to drop away. And those who are of a spiritual nature look at reality in a completely different light. That what is also transpiring is that there is a movement away from dualistic thinking, which is very polarized, to unity thinking or unity conceptualization, which allows one to see the whole picture and not simply the black and the white, the right and or the wrong. That this too is a part of the endeavor of each individual, each aspect of the soul seeking to remember itself and its greater truth. And thus, this marks the ascension process as well, a heightening of conscious awareness, a movement into unity consciousness that frees one from complete uh, control and dominance by third dimensionality as one realizes that they are indeed a spiritual being having a physical experience, that they are indeed part of the divine Godhead, and they are indeed co-creators with that divine force. Well, in, in thinking, though, specifically about our human bodies, how our physical bodies came to be here, would you support the our current understanding of evolutionary science, or would you say perhaps that something else or a combination happened? that mm, there is indeed a combination. If one stays at a level of physical awareness where in third dimensional thought, the process of evolutionary development is held as valid, then one would see that there is a movement from less enlightened beings to more physically enlightened beings, but on a physical level, not a spiritual level. What really it occurs is that the soul decides it will have a physical experience. The physical third dimensional reality is much denser than the fifth dimensional state, which is an expanded state of consciousness, non-physical, non-corporeal. As the soul decides to have a experience and as that aspect of the soul that will have the experience comes forth, it first plans the life it will have. There are contracts made with mother, father, grandparents, sisters, brothers, friends, relations. It is chosen as to what matrix the individual will live in. Will it be a North American matrix, a European or Asian? Will it be a third world country or a first world country? Many decisions are made to govern what will occur in physicality so that the aspect of the soul can have the exact experience it is planning. 
then a series of transformations occur, a muting down of the spiritual energies. In mystical terms, this is known as going through the seven gates of creation, and that the soul comes through these gates through the central sun and comes down into physicality. It is as if the spiritual component is squeezed into a physical body that has developed in the traditional physical ways, which of course are governed by spiritual precepts and laws. However, carrying on that once one is in the body, then they are governed by the rules, laws, and regulations of physicality, of third dimensional consciousness. And part of that is that there is a forgetfulness of who they truly were and where they have come from. Also, at the same time, there is that component of the experience that allows for the separation of spirit from physical, so the emphasis and focus is purely and only on a physical existence where one is limited and constricted. Yet one still has free will. One is still a creator being, even in a physical status. It is simply that one is not in memory of that, in knowledge of that, and it is not taught to one. Then one has their physical experience, and at the conclusion, there is the transformation again through the death experience back through the seven gateways, back into spirit form, where that which was the aspect having the physical experience returns with the lessons of that experience. Does this more fully answer your question? Yes, indeed. Um, it has been suggested uh, that galactic entities seeded Earth with DNA from various solar systems and universes in order to introduce the first life here on the planet. Would you agree with that statement? that there is indeed truth to this statement, that there were those that are now known and have been known as the Anunnaki, and that they have been on a planet that enters and departs the solar system every 36,000 years, that they have been involved in mankind's development indeed through the process now known as genetic engineering did indeed create the first human beings, the first Adam and Eve. Indeed, there were several prototypes, if you will, of the Adam and Eve model until one was developed that would suit the needs of the Anunnaki, which was basically that they would serve as a slave servant class, doing the heavy mining and other functions that were of service to the Anunnaki themselves and that this was the original genetic engineering. But at the same time, a plan was formulated by the entity known as Enki, later as Toth, most recently as Saint Germain, to inspire humanity to progress spiritually. And there was some manipulation of the original engineering that would allow humanity to eventually reach a point where it would be able to ascend. This point has now been reached, and that is why this is such a crucial time. Does this answer the question? Yes, it's it's interesting because uh, if I understand you correctly, you're saying that the Anunnaki, when they created uh, humanoid, uh, or what became humanoid life here on Earth, they actually limited uh, us uh, and kept us at a slave-like level but then later, another group, uh, if I'm, again, if I'm understanding you correctly, tried to correct some of this damage, let's say, that they did to our DNA. Do, do I have that correct? Indeed, there is correctness in what you are saying, but it is not completely correct to what this awareness was implying. When the original genetic engineering was done, that was when a hidden strain that would guide mankind to spiritual unfolding and awareness was first implanted. But 
you have accurately pointed out that there has been genetic tweaking over the millennia, modifying and advancing mankind. Darwin misunderstood this when he talked about the concept of survival of the fittest, where certain crises would cause the human being and all other breeds to mutate. And in these crises, that there would be growth and development, of course, in the physical body. But this awareness is that this is not so, that indeed what has happened is there has been the seeding, if you will, of humanity so that it will go through whatever shift or change is appropriate at a time. One is reminded of the missing link and how this has been searched for for many, many years now, no one finding the evidence of that leap from Neanderthal to Cro-Magnon man. That is because genetic splicing and manipulation was done at that time to create Cro-Magnon man. And that this is why there is no evidence of a missing link, for there is no missing link. This is also evidence, therefore, of the genetic engineering that these advanced extraterrestrial beings performed on existing men and women on mankind. Thank you. Um, now, turning to uh, our div back to our divine nature, um, is it not a fact that our true multidimensional spiritual aspect is actually so powerful and so grand that only a portion of it is able to exist here in the 3D world, for lack of a better world, within us? Is that correct, or am I misunderstanding something? It is indeed correct, for this is a limited container, and it is as if you were trying to squeeze the consciousness of an energy that was perhaps the size of a standard room into a thimble. That much cannot be contained in that thimble, and yet still within that thimble is a power and magnitude of infinite nature. That, that is one reason why Forgetfulness is part of the agenda of physicality, for it would be difficult to remember the totality of one's being that is now compressed into such a tight physical form. And that is also why so many have the feeling that they are not living in truth to the, their actual true being, and that they feel that there is something more for them to accomplish, that they are more than what they are told they are or have been led to believe. It is one of the primary reasons why so many seek a spiritual awareness. Many, of course, go down sidetracks and go into religion as the answer, but those who have gone through many lifetimes of mis leading lives who are already will now venture down the paths that will help them expand beyond their physicality so that they can start indeed connecting into their fifth dimensional nature which will make their journey in third dimensionality a completely different and unique experience again does this answer your question oh beautifully uh the, speaking of that spirituality, that spark of divinity that does exist within us here on the 3D level, is there any way that that can become corrupted through our actions or here in the physical uh, 3D vibratory level, or does it always remain pure and uncorrupted? That when one speaks of such matters, one can define this in accordance to whether one is speaking of one's infinite eternal nature or a more restricted limited nature. If one is talking of a limited nature, then it is true that one can lose one's path, for one has free will, and even though all come from the divine Godhead 
from their soul family that they can deviate from their intended goals and can indeed be detoured not only in one lifetime but a series of lifetimes. Thus there are those that have chosen to play in the darkness, have chosen to go down pathways that are antithesis and opposed to the light of consciousness. They have every right to live many lifetimes, indeed do live many lifetimes, where they are servants to dark energies, dark masters and that this can last for what would be measured as hundreds of thousands of years and many, many lifetimes. But as it is the intent for the spark of the soul to finally return back to its divine nature sooner or later, even in cosmic terms, there comes a turning point where there will be a return back into the divine nature of the soul and of the God force, the Godhead. This may take, as this awareness said, hundreds of thousands of years, but when one truly realizes time is a limited concept and truly does not exist, all that one is experiencing is a multitude of many lifetimes until one reaches a of consciousness where they can indeed step forward and return back into the Godhead. Is this clear? Yes, it is. Uh, I'm fascinated by the information that's come forward that tells us that everything, all things in the multiverse, including such things as air, water, molecules, stones, even planets and stars, actually contain, as I understand it, individualized consciousness and divinity similar to our own consciousness and divinity within us. Is that correct? Is my understanding correct? That this is indeed correct, for so is the complexity of the multidimensional level of consciousness that truly exists, multidimensional consciousness that all have consciousness. What one confuses this with is human consciousness, which is just one variety of consciousness. Therefore, every stone that one picks up or crystal that one peers into has consciousness. The ancient ones knew this and worked, for example, with crystals so that they could use them as tools. That the plant world indeed has consciousness. Air has consciousness, water, all of this being shown recently through such mm, mm, brilliance as Dr. Emoto and his work with molecules of water, that this is not human consciousness, but the consciousness of the elements. Thus, one could understand that air is not an individualized molecule, but a collective molecule or spark of consciousness that is the consciousness of air or the plant world or the animal world and each breed, of course, having a degree of consciousness unique to that breed. Finally, the plants and the stars indeed also have consciousness, as does the Logos that is Mother Earth, or Gaia, as she is now shifting her consciousness, is also ascending, going to a higher level of consciousness, is being promoted from the child planet juvenile conscious state into a more refined, higher level of consciousness. This is why traditionally all cultures throughout the history of the planet have always identified the planet they are on as a living, breathing consciousness or orgasm, rather organism, although one can say that life is orgastic in nature. That this awareness thus states 
that all have consciousness and that it is one of the hugest mistakes, if you will, to assume that only human consciousness is that which has relevancy, that which matters. You've just given us a fantastic and quite beautiful understanding of oneness. I really, I'm really moved by what you, by what you just said. Thank you. Um, I'd I, like to. One could say that it was rather orgastic. <laughs> I wasn't going to bring that up, but thank you. <laughs> um, I'd like to turn now to uh, a, a, a fuller understanding of karma. And particular, uh, one aspect of it that becomes quite confusing to me, uh, and that has to do with karma in relationship to parallel realities. Um, of course, we humans here at the 3D vibratory level, we're really only aware of the choices that we make here while holding focus on this, this, this one aspect, you might say, of our dimensional selves. But if parallel reality versions of ourselves do actually exist, are we also then karmically responsible for choices made by these other versions of ourselves? Choices that might not be in alignment with the ones that we've made here in this focus? That this is indeed an original and intriguing question even to this awareness. That it would start by explaining that you at this moment, Stephen Crow, are a unique focused consciousness and that the focus of your life is the reality you are experiencing in the moment. But there are indeed other versions of Stephen Crow who through the decisions and choices that were made along the way have split off and are living parallel lives. They are then the focus in those lifetimes and that they will move in accordance to their precepts and concepts. That if the aspect of the soul that chose to become physically incarnated wished to have as one of the elements a life that was in darkness, then may be one of the parallel lives instead of choosing to stay on the path of righteousness would have chosen a path into darkness and therefore that focused personality will have the experiences necessary to it that it will take back into the soul when it finishes its sojourn on the planet, that this may create karma, but what occurs is that all of the souls that had had experiences that were expressions of the original aspect that voiced itself in human form, expressed itself in human form, return back to the soul, and the soul incorporates all of the lessons that one could consider that there is no judgment at that level of the right or wrong, simply whether or not lessons were learned. And as it may have been a original intention of the soul to deviate into darkness, it will take that on board and then a new aspect later will be created to work out the karma of that focused lifetime. But that, of course, is not you in this focus. Therefore, you return back as well, and the lessons you learned of how you avoided the darkness would be incorporated, and there would be no karma involved in this journey until you decided to investigate aspects that were not quite to your satisfaction. This is the difficulty with multidimensionality, for it is so immense and complex that one starts to get lost in the strands. Rather see all the strands coming together in one twining, in one binding as one huge rope of experiences, and that it is the rope that is looked at and tested, and not necessarily each strand, but that the totality is what is important and what 
merits and karmic um, lives in, in order to address where one may have deviated from the plan. Does this help? Yes, it, it is a very complicated uh, and, and mind-bending uh, concept to, to try and uh, uh, understand. Um, you know, I had an interesting experience uh, about uh, a week or so ago while doing soul work with, uh, with a group of light workers, and a divine source lectured us quite strongly that, ironically perhaps, the members of this group were all still clinging quite strongly to suffering and to shame and that that shame was perhaps the major hindrance in our moving forward. So would you agree or disagree with uh, this that this assessment generally applies to humanity as a whole, uh, this shame aspect, this suffering aspect? And if so, why do we have all this shame and how can we finally and forever release it? In a way, this awareness can agree to this. For the purpose of this experience, experiment into mm, three-dimensional consciousness and material mm, reality was to give vent to the experiencing of the spirit in a physical form with no remembrance of itself as a spiritual force or spiritual consciousness that mm, the mm, guiding principle of this experiment was that one would enter into the physical state where pain and suffering and guilt and shame were the prerequisites of the overall experience in order to see if entities could remember their spiritual truth, which is not of that nature. It again is part of the experiment into separation from the spirit so that it even forgets itself and indeed goes into a reality where shame and suffering and guilt are prerequisite. Furthermore, that at this time in this experiment, control and authority were given not to the light beings or those who would perpetuate the light and the understanding of one's higher nature, but instead given to those who were here to represent the dark force, the force of separation. Thus, we live in a world not of enlightened leadership, but of slave mentality, where those who are the leaders work for those masters to enslave human consciousness and perpetuate the experiment that is based on pain and suffering and guilt, and that this experiment is now coming to conclusion, that the spiritual force or source that gave you this information therefore was correct. But what this awareness would also add is that this has been a experiment in the ego and the subconscious ego primarily, where it has an agenda that it has served for many lifetimes. And this agenda would put it in physicality where power and prestige and fame and fortune were the most important things to achieve in society. And that therefore the slogan, the saying, no pain, no gain makes ultimate sense for one is ordered and taught to suffer to achieve what there is to achieve. Or in the religious teachings, one is taught that suffering is part of the human condition, that the figurehead God has ordained it so that one is to come onto the physical plane to suffer. These are simply concepts. They are not mm, 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 cosmic truths, they are not universal truths, but they are accepted as such. And that when mm, those who are seekers start to scratch the surface is when they see and understand that these concepts are erroneous and they can step outside of them. They can step outside of the ego. They can moderate the mm, belief that this is a world of suffering and pain and step instead into the new dharmic conceptualization that the world is actually a place of pleasure, 
joy, happiness, and love, and that one can learn and grow and expand as well, given these principles of which one can follow versus the traditional concepts of pain and suffering, which currently rule mankind's thinking. Does this answer your question? Well, yes. I mean, I, I was surprised when I heard this information that uh, knowing, as I do, that we choose our experiences, that we choose our realities, that that would imply that we chose, to some extent, at least, suffering and shame. And why would we do that? And if we want to stop doing that, you point out that we have to release the ego. Do I have that correct? You do, indeed. Absolutely. Okay. I'd like to begin to wrap up our discussion and, and end up on a high note. Um, in going back to uh, the topic of ascension, what can you tell us about any exciting and incredible things we might experience and feel should we choose to move forward to the fourth and fifth dimensions? What wonders await us? First of all, this awareness would say that this particular experience of ascension is quite unique for the purpose and goal of this ascensional experience for those who have worked towards their ascension is to bypass the fourth dimension and enter into fifth dimensional consciousness or at the very least higher fourth dimensional on the verge of fifth dimensional consciousness. It is in the fifth dimensional state that one truly works from a level of being a creator being and can create by thought whatever experience is required. The closest most get to this at this time is when they dream and they make their reality whatever it needs to be and they create in the dream state most fantastic dreamscapes where they can have their experiences. That this is truly what the ascension experience can be about for those who choose to move themselves, work on themselves, develop themselves to the point where they move consciously into a higher awareness and understanding. That this also means that there are opportunities even now preceding that miraculous time of completion, December 21st, 2012, where individuals can create their reality on the present timeline of Mother Earth, even though it is heavily mired into third dimensional thought and conceptualization, that this awareness says that many are coming to an understanding that they can create the lives and realities they wish to experience at this time as fifth dimensional conscious beings versus third dimensional beings who have forgotten their truer nature, that this is an exciting time, but it is also a perilous time, for as the energies expand and the ability to create one's reality is made available, those who have not thought of this, who have not been taught this, have no conception that they are creator beings, will continue to follow the authority and leadership of those in control, those who have hidden agendas. And the major part of the hidden, hidden agenda is to keep all a sleep to their truth, to recognizing that they could create their reality. If you are taught that you are a victim with no means of changing the circumstances of your life, then you will create that reality so seamlessly that you would never question this, and that is exactly what is still occurring. For those who have not awakened but still are on this planet at this time to have a secondary experience of ascension, they may well have to experience an ascension process out of their control where they experience the upheaval, even the mm, geophysical catastrophes that may happen on various timelines of experience. But those who have risen their consciousness, who have dealt with their subconscious ego, who are ready to step into their magnificence 
as a creator being may find themselves now on a paradise that simply rides forward through the ascension as they become ascended beings. Does this answer your question? Yes, perfectly. Well, with our thanks and appreciation, I'd like to give you Cosmic Awareness an opportunity now to address the viewers of this program directly with any information that you think is important to share before we say our goodbyes and, and bring Will back. That what this awareness would say to one and all is to not be afraid of these times, for even though there is upheaval in the world, in one's nation, in one's community, in oneself, this is the upheaval of a time that is ending, and that which follows may be indeed considered as something of great magnificence and great wonder. That if one places themselves in the fear that is promoted in all aspects of life at this time, one will be distracted and misled. One will come to the edge of the precipice and mm, mm, leap over as so many of the lemmings do when they stampede in mass into the edge of the cliff. One must be reminded, and this awareness reminds one and all, that you are not a lemming, and that when everyone else stampedes towards their destruction, that you halt your progress, that you look at your life, that you affirm that you are not a victim, but that you are a being of spiritual quality, a soul having a physical experience that is very much in your control, that you are a creator being, and that you energize the most positive and uplifting view of life that you can, knowing and trusting that you will make the jump, that you will cross the abyss, that when you come to this abyss, that things will manifest and materialize in your life, that a bridge will be produced, or if you are forced to jump in complete faith, that you will have the wings to fly across that this is what this awareness would impart to one and all, that you are a creator being, that these times are the most amazing opportunities to step into the power of your divine nature and accept nothing else. These are indeed interesting times, but it is up to each and every individual of whether they need to be interesting times as prophesized as a Chinese curse or interesting times of growth and development and the rediscovery and the remembrance of one's true spiritual nature. This awareness wishes one and all its light, its love, and its blessings on the journey ahead. Thank you. Well, Will, welcome back. Uh, okay. So I'd see you on the other side, and here we are. Here we are. Um, so is there uh, anything uh, special coming up uh, for you? Is there anything uh, you'd like us to, uh, to know about? Of course, the most special thing coming up for me is a return back to Australia. Uh, yes. <laughs> special and important. Uh, yeah, I'd like to promote, if I can, how to get in contact with me, how to access the cosmic awareness information, that kind of thing. If people are very interested in knowing more about not only the channelings the, over the years of cosmic awareness that I've been responsible for, but past uh, uh, interpreters like Paul Shockley, they can go to cosmicawareness.org. If they want to get in touch with me at this time, they can get through to me on my website of willberlinghoff.com. So that would put uh, most people right there and, and give them information how to uh, proceed, how to join the membership of Cosmic Awareness Communications if they're desire, desiring more 
communications and informations from Cosmic Awareness. And if they are interested, if an individual is interested in having a personal reading, which is quite an amazing experience, I think you just felt it, then they can contact me through the uh, website where the phone number and the address is uh, right now kept. Um, I do work personally as a counselor as well, and I am a multi-dimensional counselor. So I take people into the depth of their own inner being so that they can make the adjustments and understand their life purpose that is needed for them. And of course, a cosmic awareness reading or consultation is a very unique experience. Oh. Finally, uh, the last thing I just wanted to say very quickly is that uh, Callista, my wife, my beautiful, lovely wife, of course, is currently working on a new website that will soon be up that will be called rainbow phoenix and it's now rainbowphoenix.com the website is under construction but look to see it up and running in a couple of weeks at least so there'll be more information there too absolutely well will i want to thank you again for being so generous with your time and for sharing this extraordinary information with our audience as always, we invite viewers to leave their comments, their questions, and any guest recommendations on the Soul Adventure TV website or on YouTube or Facebook. And please feel free to share this video. This information is meant for everyone. So until next time, this is Steve Crow, your host, wishing you an enlightening and fulfilling soul adventure. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.